Hello and welcome to InServe. This video will show you how to increase your wealth just in six months with more income. If you watch this video until the end, you'll probably be the first wealthy person in your family because I'm going to share with you very important things we call secrets to wealth. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to be successful in life? You can learn to be successful just as you learn math, chemistry, biology, or how to tie your shoelaces. In the same way you learn these things, you can also learn to be successful, which is totally different from succeeding. Being successful is one thing, succeeding is another. For example, there might be a tennis player who has a lot of success playing tennis. But if you look at their personal life, it's all in a mess. This person is successful in playing tennis, but not successful in life. To be successful in life, you have to work in various areas in the personal, professional, financial, family, social, and friendship areas. This is the big difference between success and being successful. What are you looking for? Do you want success in something specific? Or do you want to be successful overall? Leave your comment. I already want to mention that if you want to be successful, watch this video until the end because at the end of this video you will find very valuable tips. Let's go back to our analysis. Now you might be thinking to be successful, I would have to be born with a silver spoon. No, 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 on the contrary. Successful people in life in general had difficult childhoods. 85% of people who consider themselves successful in America came from humble families. That is, they worked as employees for someone, went through difficult times. So you are nor doomed to be who you always were. Your past is gone and you can't change that. But your future is not yet written. You can start writing it today. If you can understand this, it will make a huge difference in your life simply because you understand this perspective of tomorrow. Know that we are the only animals on planet Earth with the ability to rise above and surpass. That means, starting over, it does not matter where you were born. It doesn't matter the upbringing you had in childhood. It doesn't matter what you did or didn't do until today. Tomorrow you can open a new book, start the first page that's called Rising Above and Surpassing Who You Are. But to do that, we have to make some changes first. You, me, everybody knows what I'm talking about. A series of beliefs, and these beliefs are often unfavorable. They are not bringing us the desired results. A belief becomes obsolete when it is not giving us what we want, which is to evolve. So let's eliminate the obsolete beliefs that are not bringing us the desirable results. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. The secret here is to make it spin faster. Because someone has come before, studied all of this, researched millionaires, successful people, not only in terms of money, but in terms of family, health, etc. And they managed to identify what common habits these so-called successful people have. So do you want to move towards success? I want to know where you are coming from. If you don't have a clear idea of where you are coming from, it is practically impossible to achieve the success you are seeking. So the first thing we need to know is your level of self-esteem. So I'm going to do a questionnaire here. Very yes, very no. We will take five area of your life. Health, family, finances, professional life and friendships. And from each of these specifically, you will give a rating from 1 to 10. Then we will add up these ratings. And then you will see what happens. Let's start first with health. We know people who are 30 and never get sick, right? And also, you must know people who are sick every day. So you will have to evaluate your health. If you are the type of person who never gets sick, is always well, you will give a rating of 10 because you are completely healthy. If you are a person that is sick every day, you will give a rating of 1. So you have between 1 and 10. You will have to choose the rating that you think you deserve from. 1 to 10. And then, how much would you give for your health? If you are a person that has a weakness in your character, and smokes, drinks, and uses illicit drugs, of course, that will lower the rating. You have to ask your subconscious and determine what rating you have for your health. Now let's go to your family. When I say family, it's the family nucleus, my parents, children, siblings, in-laws, your family as a whole. From one to 10, what rating would you give? Do you have an ideal, perfect family with nothing to change? Then it's 10. Look, you first gave the rating for your health. Now you give the rating for your family. Now let's go to your financial life. How is your bank account? 
If you lost your job today, if you stopped working today, if something unexpected happened to you today, how long will your current lifestyle last? This has a name, it's called an emergency fund. It's the number of days you can maintain your standard of living if you interrupt your income. If you stopped working today, have you earned enough for money to work for you? Because money is an excellent employee, but a terrible boss. If you work for money, my condolences. But if on the other hand, you put money to work for you, all right, that's what money knows how to do well, work for you. So how is your financial life? Are you the kind of person that can stop working for a while? Let's say you decided to stop working today and what you have in savings or investments, will it yield enough to maintain your standard of living? What rating do you deserve? If you are in debt, spending more than you earn, or if you earn and spend everything immediately, you are earning and spending, earning and spending, you will give a rating close to one. It's not me, it's you who will choose this rating, just like you chose the rating for your health, for your family. Now you are choosing for your financial life. But let's now go to your work, your professional life. Let me ask you a very simple question. If you won a million dollars in the lottery tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, would you continue doing the same professionally that you do now, or would you change? If you win a million dollars tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, you are doing exactly the same. It means that you are in total harmony with your professional activity, so there you deserve a 10. Now, if you're counting the days until retirement, it means you are not satisfied with what you are doing. Then, you deserve to receive a rating close to one or two. We saw our health, we have the rating for family, we gave our rating for finance, we gave our rating for work. I have one more rating, which is friendship. I am not talking about acquaintances. I am talking about friends you can count on. Who can you count on today? Who do you know will help you? If you died today, who would come to your funeral tomorrow? Without a doubt, that's a good question to see who is close to you. So, friendship, you have two things. First, it's the number of friends, and second is the quality of those friendships. Sometimes it's much more important to have fewer friends, but a better quality. So what's the rating? Well, now you have already given a rating for your health, for your family, for your finances, for your professional life, and for your friendship. Please add up these five ratings. Now I'm going to use an example here to help you. Let's suppose I gave a 7 rating to all these 5 areas of my life. I added 7 5 times, so the result is 35. I take this number and multiply it by 2. Now I have 70. This means I am operating at a self-esteem potential of 70%. Do it there. Let's see what happens. Take these 5 ratings, add them up, multiply by 2. Now you know where you are coming from. So, let's suppose if I am coming from 70%, it means I'm using 70% of my self-esteem. 70% of the potential of my soul. If I now take this potential and increase it to 72, 73, this makes an absurd difference in the result. A small difference in performance brings a tremendous difference in the result. An example of this is a horse that comes in first compared to a horse that comes in second. The difference is a nose, that's just a small difference. The nose of the first horse crossed the finish line a little before the nose of the second. But think about it, the first will be remembered forever and will win the prize and be greatly praised. And the second is just a difference of a nose. No one will remember who came in second. That's because it was a difference of a few centimeters, fractions of a second. So learn that a small difference in performance brings a tremendous difference in results. You compare a poor, unsuccessful individual and a millionaire successful individual. They get up more or less at the same time. They go to bed around the same time. So you see that there isn't much difference between one and the other. But what is one doing? They are small details done constantly, strategically, that makes all the difference. Then you find out that you are operating at 60% of your self-esteem. Then you ask me, Mr. Inserve, how do I improve? Then comes a crucial point. I will show you three things you have to do. The first thing is for you to develop a capacity for visualization, not of what you don't want, but of what you want. If you focus on what you don't want, instead of focusing on what you want, it's as if you were driving a car, looking through the rearview mirror. You know where you are coming from, but you don't know where you are going. So Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. Every time there was a dispute between knowledge and imagination, imagination always won. 
so you have to learn to imagine the situation that you want. It has to exist first in your brain. Let me give you an example. You dream of acquiring a new house. You have to see how many rooms it will have, how it will be built, what color the outer wall will be, what color the inner wall will be, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what furniture, what carpet you will put. You start creating this new house in your mind. The more specific, the more characteristics, the more details you put. It will also be easier to create because everything that exists in the physical universe was created twice. You want to see it? Look around you. Choose any object that you saw there. Anyone. It can even be the object you're holding right now. Yes, your phone. Even before it was created, it went through someone's mind. So everything that exists in the physical universe first existed in someone's mind before manifesting in the physical universe. So you have to learn the process of visualization. It's very simple. It's you closing your eyes and focusing on what you want. In your health area, in your family area, in your professional areas, in the most important areas of your life, you have to learn to visualize. That's the first thing you need to do, but it doesn't stop there. Have you noticed that since I have started talking inside your head, there's a dialogue, an inner dialogue that is talking to you all the time? With many things you agree, but there are some things you disagree with. There's a conversation inside your head. There is a voice inside your head asking, what voice is that? So stop for a moment and pay attention to it. Is it a friendly voice or not? Do you consider it a friend or is it someone who is criticizing you? It can be your own voice. It can be your father's voice. It can be your mother's voice. But there is an internal dialogue inside that makes a huge difference in your life. That's the internal dialogue. What kind of dialogue do you have? So when a negative dialogue appears, you have to say, cancel, cancel, cancel. Let me tell you one more thing. The way that you carry your body. What is your posture? Go to a mall in your city and spend some time observing people passing by. There will be people walking with their necks straight, looking at the horizon, right? And there will be people walking with their heads down, looking at the ground. If you are in a room and a king, a queen, a prince, a princess enters, even if you don't know they're a king, a queen, you will see the person that enters has majesty. What does it mean to have majesty? They walk with an upright posture. They learned since childhood the butler taught them that they had to walk as if balancing a book on their head. When I stretch my body, imagining that there's a hook coming from the sky, pulling my head, my neck stretches, my shoulders relax. I connect with universal intelligence, that flow of intelligence there. And you know what happens? I improve my self-esteem. So to improve my self-esteem, I have to know how to visualize. I have to know how to deal with internal dialogue. I have to cancel what is negative. This is a very serious problem. Have you ever stopped to think that all the time we are imagining things, whether positive or negative? If I say think of an elephant, at this very moment you are imagining an elephant. Now, if I tell you don't think of a lion, even though I said not to think, you ended up thinking. Do you know why this happened? Because the word no has no linguistic representation. For example, a mother will say, son, don't disturb your little sister. The mother is talking to the child and he continues to disturb his sister because for the boy's subconscious mind, the mother is telling him to disturb his sister. The mother here is focusing on what she doesn't want. What this mother should do is focus on what she really wants, which in this case would be, instead of saying, son, stop disturbing your sister, she should try this, son, could you leave your sister alone? So you have to express what you want, not what you don't want. And this also works for internal dialogue. Learn to control this. And this video will have been very worthwhile for you. It will give you immense long-term benefits. If you understand what I mean, please comment. I understood. Now I'm going to teach another very important lesson. We are judged in life by three things your appearance, what you say, and how you say what you say. If someone asks you a question, how you respond makes all the difference. I can have two bricklayers laying bricks. I go to the first bricklayer and ask, what do you do in life? He replies, I am a bricklayer. I put one brick on top of the other, and then I ask the second bricklayer, what do you do in life? 
I am also a bricklayer, he will answer and he will continue saying, I am building the Maracana which is the largest football stadium in the world, and it will stay here for posterity. Look how interesting, both physically do the same thing, put one brick on top of the other, only one sees it as a job, and the other has a broader perspective. So this other one won't be a bricklayer for long, soon he will own a construction company. Second, you are judged by your appearance. Do you want to play for Flamengo? Don't show up there in Fluminense's uniform. Do you want to join the army? Don't show up there in shorts and a tank top. So you have to be appropriately dressed for the occasion. I'm going to teach success, so I have to be well presented according to the situation, understand? So you can be watching however you want. In shorts, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But if I were giving this lecture in a church, for example, I couldn't be in shorts and flip-flops or thongs, as they say in Australia, I would be teaching about success, so I should be dressed in success uniform. Appearance is very important. You are judged by your appearance, you are judged by what you say. While you haven't said anything, no one knows if you're intelligent or not. But the moment you speak and speak nonsense, there's no way to go back. An arrow once launched does not return. When a spoken word is launched, it no longer belongs to you. It has been thrown into the world, so if you are not sure what you are going to say, it's better to stay silent. Most wise people are respected for speaking little, and it's not just what you say, it's how you say what you say. Two individuals can say the same thing, and the impact will be totally different. There is a phrase that goes like this. The singer is more important than the song. You're a fan of a great singer, right? I imagine that the singer has a song that touches your heart. That same song sung by a singer you don't like wouldn't have the same impact on you. So, know what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, and at the right time, okay? Let me say another important piece of knowledge for you. I know, pay attention. Imagine that you are going to bake a cake. This cake is not made with just flour, not just with butter, not just with eggs. Of course butter is important. The egg is important. It's necessary, but it's not enough. The success cake we are learning has six ingredients. The first ingredient is self-esteem. The second is communication. And now comes goals, comes attitude, comes work, and comes ambition. When you put these six ingredients together with patience, persistence, which are the characteristics of the professional that the amateur doesn't have, the amateur wants everything yesterday, but nature doesn't work that way. Dawn only comes after the whole night has passed, and so on. You plant a seed, the next day it's not a plant, it continues to be a seed starting its germination process, but it continues to be a seed. So, I have to understand that I am on the right path and it takes time for that to happen. Many people end up making mistakes in this. Often a person gives up before things happen. That's why patience and persistence are essential. I wanted to talk to you now about a goal. It is necessary to learn to turn a dream into a goal. And then we will learn to turn a goal into reality, right? How do I turn a dream into a goal? I turn a dream into a goal by setting a date. Anything you want someday will never happen, so you'll have a dusty book on your shelf at home you said you would read someday. But it's been four years since you bought it. It's there because there is no someday on the calendar. Do you agree? To start happening, you need to have a date. You say one day we'll do this. There is no day on the calendar with that name, so it will never happen. Now you put a date. Oops, now it makes all the difference. You have to learn to put dates on your dreams. The moment you put a date on the dream, it ceases to be a dream and becomes a goal. And the universe begins to conspire in your favor. But then you turn the dream into a goal. But you need to turn it into a reality. That's another story. You can't stop there. First, I want to tell you that the importance of the goal is not necessarily to achieve it, but to set you in motion, because, who knows, something more important will happen along the way. Do you want to see? I'll prove it to you. Think about the three most important things that have happened in your life so far since you can remember. What happened most importantly? Three events, your wedding, the birth of your child, or a promotion at your job. You pass the entrance exam. You graduate from college. There are many important things in your life, but you will notice that at least two or three were not planned. You didn't wake up one day and say, today I'm going to meet someone because I'm going to fall in love, because I'm going to marry them. It wasn't like that. 
You just went somewhere, fell in love, planned and got married, and that job you have there, you got a job at a company. Did you wake up one day and say, today I'm going to become an employee at this company? Did it happen like that? No, you saw an advertisement. Someone invited you, went for an interview, handed in your resume, got approved. And one day you never imagined someone called you and said, you start working tomorrow. Interesting. I have to have goals to put me in motion, but I have to have my mind prepared for better things, right? Then maybe other opportunities more important than the one you are focusing on will arise in your life. You have to have this flexibility. And this goal cannot be just one thing. There must be diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Someone comes and carries your basket. It's over. Takes all your eggs. For example, do you only have the profession of being a mother? Which is the noblest profession on planet Earth, being a mother, and you dedicate yourself entirely to being a mother. Look at the risk you're taking. If you are a mother, one day your children will grow up. They will leave. We raise children for the world. They don't stay with us. They go take care of their lives. And then what will you say? Oh, but now I feel empty. It's the emptiness syndrome. It's the mother who dedicated her entire life to her children. The children grew up, went to take care of their lives, and the mother feels alone. So you have to have diversity. You have to have a financial goal. You have to have a professional goal. You have to have a social goal. You have to have a family goal. You have to have a health goal. What's the use of earning a lot and having a heart attack when you're 40? Is it worth it? I won't take anything to the grave. The coffin has no drawer. The coffin has no pocket. Why earn all this money and leave this life without enjoying it? So you have to have leisure goals. I have to diversify my goals. This is very important. You set a goal and it has to be remembered. Don't remember it only on December 31st and think it's all sorted out. No, 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 you have to remember it every day. The Orientals take a doll called Daruma, I don't know if you know, and paint one eye of the doll. Paint the right eye of the doll, and then there's still the left eye to paint, and they put that doll on the table. That doll represents a goal, buying a new house. So every time they look at that doll, they remember the goal. It serves as a reminder for it. There are several Darumas in the room, many with both eyes painted and some with only one eye painted, because the goal has to be remembered. For example, are you studying medicine just because it's your parents' dream? No, 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 it's all wrong. Tell your father to take the entrance exam. You have to pursue a goal that is yours, that you really desire, understand? If an Oriental said he would buy a new house and when he buys it, he goes there and paints the other eye of the doll. If you enter an Oriental's house, you will see that there are several Darumas in the room, many with both eyes painted and some with one eye painted. In 1945, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, everything was destroyed, 40% of Japan destroyed. Today it is among the top five countries in the world. Do you know what happened, can you guess, from 40% destroyed to among the top five countries in the world? Remember this philosophy called Kaizen, always improve, Continuous improvement. When you say, I don't want anything else in life, I say then, it's time for you to die because you are here to learn. Or rather, when you die, when you transcend, when you change your cosmic address. And when you get there on the other side, they will ask you three questions. The first question is, what did you learn there? This is a school, we are learning. The second question is, how is your passage through planet Earth? Did you make a better place for those who will come after you? And lastly, and most importantly, they will ask you, did you cost more than you contributed? Oregon. Did you contribute more than you cost? Or rather, I recommend to you, when you put your head on the pillow to sleep at night, ask yourself a question. Did I cost more than I contributed? Or did I contribute more than what I cost today? And this today keeps adding up, keeps adding up, keeps adding up, right? Before that, it is important for you to consider this. I want to make it clear to you that life is a sequence of hellos and goodbyes. To give the next hello, you have to say goodbye. The big hello of your life, you won't remember, but you gave it when you arrived here on planet Earth. 
You came here crying, and everyone here to welcome you was smiling. I hope that when you die, when you transcend, when you change your cosmic address, it happens exactly the opposite. That you leave smiling because you fulfilled your mission, and whoever stays here will be crying because you are leaving. And you have to learn to work with these six ingredients, self-esteem, communication, goals, work, attitude, ambition. And as I said, what distinguishes the professional from the amateur is patience and persistence. I don't need to worry about my weaknesses. I need to focus on my strengths. These strengths will make my weaknesses disappear. That's the big catch. So if you're not prepared, it's no use. If I offer you 20,000 euros a month to teach German in Germany, and you don't speak German, it's useless. So when you are prepared and the opportunity appears, because it will appear, and most of the time it comes in the form of a problem. So when it appears and you are prepared, people call it luck. Luck is nothing more than the opportunity arriving and you being prepared to seize it. In other words, your luck is built by you. That person adrift waiting for something to happen, nothing will happen at all. That's the big problem. Be prepared when the great opportunity comes. If you watch this video all the way through, comment like this. This is the secret of life. Just comment that. This is the secret of life. When I see this comment, I will know that you watched this whole video, and it shows that you are a persistent and patient person. You are closer to success than those who left halfway through the video. Now I imagine that you want to increase your knowledge even more, right? So there is a video or two appearing on your screen that you might find of interest, and also helpful ways to make money online. Plenty of links in the description that can help you in ways you could not imagine. So find it and click on it now. Thank you for watching. Peace and may God bless all.